Hello. Uh, thank you all so much for being here today with us. Uh, it's such a privilege to be able to gather in this way uh, together, even if we're not all in the same space. Um, this is obviously a lot easier to do when we get to be all together, um, but it's been a fascinating last couple of months for us here at Quintessence and I think for theaters across this country. Um, the Theater Communications Group, which is the national um, organization for American theaters, uh, held their first part of their annual conference all virtually. Uh, so we all came together and began these conversations about what theater is and where theater is going and how it's going to respond to this moment. And almost since the first uh, week after the official shutdown, um, the government shutdown, all of the artistic directors of the theaters in Philadelphia have been meeting on a Thursday or Friday afternoon, um, drinking together, talking over Zoom, uh, virtually meeting, uh, and really thinking as a collective about who we are and what the city is and, and where things are going to uh, continue to progress. And I just have to say that this is now our 10th year and I had never met a number of those individuals or had conversations with them. And the new, the new community that's being created out of, out of this moment, I think is extraordinary. And I think are, is really going to allow all of us um, to move forward in a completely new way. Um, here at Quintessence, we have, I feel like we've been working harder uh, in the last three months um, than we ever have. Uh, it's our 10th season. We were so excited. We saw the finish line. Uh, we should have closed our first three show repertory last Sunday. Um, and we got all the way to the, the week before technical rehearsals with uh, three just extraordinary projects. Um, and we didn't get to show them or share them with you yet, um, which I think was the right thing to do at that time. And we didn't really have a choice. Um, but since that time, we've really been looking at what quintessence is and, and what it needs to become. Um, I'm choosing to be boundlessly optimistic at this moment. And I know that there are many ways in which you can, can see this situation as one that, that lacks opportunity and hope. But I feel that quintessence is particularly um, in a good space to be part of the vanguard that is going to bring back, not just this streaming storytelling, but the live theater and performance. Um, we have a couple of very exciting projects that we are developing right now, which hopefully will happen in the short term and we'll get to announce soon that involve us getting back out into the community in safe ways as storytellers and performing live uh, for, for the community. Um, something that's been fascinating to me is hearing other artistic directors talking about what is our mission now and what how can we possibly survive as a business in this new format um, with smaller audiences and how can we prove that we're essential to this community that we're part of. And the only reason why Quintessence is here and has made it for 10 years is because we are scrappy, we are focused, relentlessly focused on our mission statement, which is to bring the classics to today. And because we put our very limited resources into bringing together the best artists possible on what is the equivalent of a bare stage and bringing these plays to vivid life for small but passionate audiences. So we are already in a position to continue to do what we do, um, to very much protect our audience when they come into our space uh, and, and really look at this art form in a new way today, in a safe way today, following all of the necessary health and safety guidelines. We've already looked at how we can reconfigure the Sedwick, our glorious home. And because of the size of the space, we can have proper social distancing uh, for every patron or every cluster of patrons and ensure that there's safe distances. Um, if you're interested in how we're thinking about this, um, you can go to our website. There is a special page for artist and patron safety in the age of COVID. Uh, it will show you exactly how we're thinking about this process. Um, we're taking advice from the CDC, from the state of Pennsylvania, and also from Actors Equity Association, our union, to see how we can actually come back together. Um, because our space is so flexible, unlike many theaters, we have this opportunity. And because of the fact that really we are just actors telling stories in a space, 
uh, we have an opportunity on an economic level to continue to run our small but passionate organization in a fiscally responsible way and create art. So with all these questions about where things are going and, and, and where we may be in the fall, um, we've put together a season which we're really excited to share with you. This is a little sneak peek. Um, this will go live and official uh, for everybody um, on Tuesday. Um, so, so you very much a, a privileged few. Um, Shakespeare talks about the creation of great reckonings in little rooms. Um, and I, I feel like when I'm proudest of quintessence is when we are telling epic stories um, in our little space. And by epic, I mean, I mean tales that take on the largest questions and the greatest characters and heroes and villains and expand beyond the obvious physical capacity of, of the literal space uh, that the theater exists in. Um, this is what we do. Um, and we're gonna try and continue to do this as we move into this new era that we're all facing. I'm going to load up my slides now. <clears throat> We are planning on producing in the fall. Um, we are holding off on officially announcing what the fall plans will be, um, largely out of respect to the Actors Union, which is still figuring out the regulations regarding performance uh, moving forward. And also as we figure out um, our situation with the city of Philadelphia and the state of Pennsylvania. Um, so stand by for the fall plans, but in the meanwhile, we are sharing with you You're gonna hear me clicking, so please feel free to giggle along. This is our plan for season 11. Uh, every time uh, I put together a season, it's really a collective effort of exploring a series of plays that we sort of put under the banner of a theme. Uh, and we really try and get a sense of the zeitgeist and what are the questions that the world is asking. Um, we had a very cool season picked out for season 11 before uh, COVID-19 shut us all down in the spring. Um, but we decided to sort of scrap almost all of it uh, and really look at the theme of fate versus free will. The questions uh, is really looking at how much in life can we control and how much in life is part of the larger forces of the universe, be it nature or the gods. We are going to start off this uh, official part of our season with one of my favorite tales, The Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. You might know the story already. It was adapted into a number of very famous films, um, or you might also know Hodgson Burnett's uh, the, the Secret Garden. Um, what most people don't know is that this started off as a play uh, in the early 20th century and was a hit on the London stage and in New York City. And we're excited to go back to this original drama, the story of a 13 year old girl who wakes up one morning and loses everything, uh, but quickly realizes that through her own ingenuity, um, she's able to truly be a princess, even though she no longer has fancy gowns or wealth. Um, we're very excited to continue our family holiday classics with this extraordinary tale. <clears throat> then we are returning to our 20th century American classics in the winter with Thornton Wilder's Pulitzer Prize winning play, The Skin of Our Teeth. Um, this American comedy uh, has been thought of as being um, outlandish and absurdist at times um, as it follows the uh, quintessential American family through 5,000 years of existence, the ice age, multiple plagues, wars, the great depression. And despite all that they face, they find themselves um, indomitable and the American spirit intact. Uh, and we're thrilled to bring this other great American classic to quintessence. Then we are moving on to the Greeks or back to the Greeks. Um, two of my absolutely favorite productions we've ever done at Quintessence was Antigone uh, or Morning Becomes Electra, uh, O'Neill's adaptation of the Oresteia. Um, Euripides the Bacchae is known as being one of the greatest tragedies ever written and really looks at the role of leadership as it faces uh, the force of nature or the force of the gods and how to gracefully involve itself with those forces. Uh, it is also a very funny play that will um, 
be a lot of fun for us to bring to life in the Cedric Theater. And this is part of our Gods and Emperors repertory. The second half of the repertory is going to be Ionesco's The Chairs, uh, a tragic farce that questions one's perception of the meaning of life. Um, we are so excited to bring these extraordinary works to Quintessence's stage and to you. We hope that you will make a leap of faith with us um, at this time and that you will consider joining us for um, We hope that you will join us for this uh, incredible season of plays. Um, I think that uh, even if the world continues to remain in flux, uh, we are going to find ways of, of telling these stories uh, in our space and bringing them to you in new ways. But I am encouraged and really excited to open our doors to all of you uh, again uh, in a new way in a, in a safe way uh, and in a way that allows us to gather together again um, and, and tell, these, tell these essential tales. Um, I'm so sorry I don't get to say hello to all of you. There are so many absolutely incredible people that are streaming this and, and what we are doing at Quintessence would not be possible without all of you. Um, so as we venture through these next couple of months, I hope that we are all able to stay in contact uh, and continue to cheer each other on uh, in art and in life. Um, I've heard a lot of people question sort of where art is going to fit back in as we, uh, as we adjust to this, this new era um, because of all of the extraordinary needs that our society has now uh, and the challenges that it faces. Um, I've always thought of the theater as a place for us to gather and to ask the essential and the impossible questions. Uh, I think the questions are more real than ever. Um, and being able to access these classics at this time for a little bit of peace of mind, for uh, a, a bit of understanding uh, and a sense of the collective journey that we are on now, that we were on a thousand years ago and that we will be on as we continue forward, I think will be helpful for all of us. So I can't wait to see all of you at the Sedgwick Theater. Um, there are also so many exciting things happening in the building. We're finally building proper dressing rooms. Uh, we are working on fixing certain holes that have been there for way too long. Uh, so when you return, you will be welcomed into a truly or even more magical space um, than the Sedgwick that you know and love. So I'm so grateful to all of you for being here. Um, I cannot thank the, all of the artists enough who have been part of this project, who have been part of Quintessence over these 10 years. Truly, um, what we do is because of the incredible talents, uh, or what we're able to do is because of the incredible talents of these, of these performers and all that they give. Um, and the world that they're facing right now is even more horrifying than, than the one that the institutions are facing. Um, and I'm very, very, very excited to find ways of continuing to engage and support and make sure that they are still here and they are as strong and, and magnificent as they were uh, two months ago um, when this began as, as they will be when we come out of this. So thank you so much for supporting this. This is all part of that effort. Um, and I hope that you will um, take a leap of faith uh, and subscribe. And uh, I hope to see you all in, in person in, in the real world soon. So thank you very much.